Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to take you to Rameshwaram and Danushkodi. Come with us and enjoy. We along with other family members were heading to Rameshwaram to pay respects to a lost member of the family. While it is impossible to take camera inside the Rameshwaram temple, we can always tell you what happens there and capture the beautiful route to this place. This is the Pamban Bridge which is India's first sea bridge. It is an engineering marvel that evokes awe. Only few can forget a train journey on the Pamban Bridge, connecting Rameshwaram Island to the mainland. With 143 piers spanning 2 kilometers between the mainland and the island, it is the second longest sea bridge in India after the 2.3 km Bandra Worli sea link on Mumbai's western coast. Efforts were taken for the construction of the bridge as early as the 1870s with the British administration planning to expand trade connectivity to Sri Lanka, then Ceylon. However, the construction of the rail bridge commenced only by 1911 and it was commissioned on February 24, 1914. The Pamban Bridge was the only link between Rameshwaram and the mainland until 1988 when a road bridge running parallel to it was built. Earlier, it used to transport hundreds of pilgrims every day to the temple in the island. the bridge survived a major cyclone that flattened the Nushkodi, a thriving port town. The bridge was further strengthened in 2009 for running goods traffic. Indian Railways is buying to bring the bridge in the UNESCO's World Heritage List. As India's first sea bridge, it has also become a tourist attraction by itself as people watch in awe when the two leaves of the bridge open up to let ships to pass through. Pamban Bridge being developed by Railway Vikas Nigam Limited will be India's first ever vertical lift rail sea bridge. It is being constructed parallel to the old railway bridge. The bridge is being built at an estimate cost of Rs 250 crores. Rameshwaram along with Badrinath, Puri and Dwaraka are the famous temples of India that are visited by pilgrims to attain salvation. The Indian epic Ramayana is associated with this temple where the Lord Rama worshipped the lingam of Lord Shiva to get rid of the sins he committed when he fought with Ravana, the king of Lanka.
The highlight here in this temple is the striking long corridors in its interior running between huge colonnades on platforms above 5 feet high. It is renowned for its magnificent corridors and massive sculptured pillars. The third corridor of Ramnath Swami temple is the longest in the world. Pilgrims visiting Rameshwaram cannot miss the darshan of Ramnath Swami and bathing in all the 22 Tirthams to absolve oneself from all the sins. heading to Danushkodi. The pretty town with unprecedented views of blue waters is hugged by the confluence of Indian Ocean and the Bay of Bengal. Danushkodi is located on the tip of Pamban Island, the place that was once a thriving town in South India with infinite legends to it has been reduced to ruins and mystic stories today. Many years back, this bustling town had a railway station, police station, medical center and basic amenities. Ferries from Chennai and to Talaimanar in Sri Lanka was a perfect tourist activity until the massive cyclone engulfed in the entire region on 21st December 1964. The cyclone, the tides as high as 20 feet didn't spare anything but ruins. Post calamity, government, after analyzing the perilous location of Tanushkodi, declared it as an uninhabitable place. Hence, the place got popular as the ghost town. Today, apart from the 50 to 60 odd fishermen and a few local shopkeepers, nobody else lives here. The place continues to fascinate history lovers and experience seekers. the calmness of the blue waters on either side along with the sight of the ruins such as the school the old church etc from the Danushkodi town Kodi translates to the end of the bow and the bow we are discussing here is Lord Rama's. The legend has it that when Ravana kidnapped Sita and took her to Lanka, the events propelled Lord Rama to build the Rama Setu bridge also known as Adam's bridge. The bridge is faintly visible from a distance and has been confirmed even by the geologists. In the process of making a bridge to Lanka which is very few kilometers from Danushkodi, Rama earmarked this as the place from where bridge construction would begin. He took his bow to mark this place and hence its name. We have finally reached Danushkodi which is the southeasternmost part of India. So if you see this, this is the tip of India and when we just cross this we will reach Sri Lanka. I think it's only 18 kilometers far from here. Very beautiful place, must visit and we really love the route as well.
लास्ट एकदम सीधे स्टेट कला कला एक टवर श्रीलंका <laughs> 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 मल After visiting Danishkodi, we were heading to Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam's National Memorial. Spread over 2.11 acres of land, the memorial is constructed on the grave site of Dr. Kalam, where his mortal remnants were put to rest on July 27, 2015. In order to pay tribute to India's missile man, the Defence Research and Development Organisation, with which Dr. Kalam had been associated for several years of his life, came up with an initiative to construct his memorial. and with an investment of rupees 120 crore its construction had been completed in a record time of just 9 months camera was not allowed inside the memorial but however i would highly recommend you to visit this place to acknowledge the great work done by dr kalam We then stopped by for a beautiful sunset view overlooking the Pamban Bridge. Trust me, this was one of the best sunsets I have ever seen in my life. We also could get a very close view of the architectural marvel that was being built. After that wonderful journey of visiting Rameshwaram, Dhanushkodi and all the other places that you just saw, we were heading to Madurai to visit Madurai Meenakshi Temple and we got an amazing place to stay just overlooking the temple. So we had some great views of the temple uh, during the night. The accommodation was rightly named as the Temple View. We made the booking on agoda.com so you can also definitely try this place out when you're visiting Madurai the next time. The next day after a beautiful early morning darshan, we spent our time roaming around the temple having a beautiful breakfast. and also coming back to the spot to take some great pictures we also went to another beautiful place in madurai but you will have to wait for the next video to know what it is so until we meet next time take care bye bye and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel